Well, first of all, I know you guys talked a little bit about this in, in the last hour. I think it's, it's important to remind people, those candidates' job is not to prosecute a case against George Bush, I mean, against uh, uh, Donald Trump last night. Theirs is to win the nomination. I've been through these mm -hmm. debates uh, before for president. The people who are gonna decide the general election are not tuned in right now. So le I think it's, it's wrong to say, uh, Trump got let off the hook, we should feel bad about the party. There are maybe other reasons we should feel bad. Second of all, what matters now is not how people like us uh, judge it, quite frankly, because we're going to see evidence very soon in actual votes. And so the question is, who advantaged themselves in Nevada, South Carolina, and Super Tuesday, uh, and who didn't? So I think the front runner uh, largely leaves unscathed. So it was a good night for Bernie Sanders. Elizabeth Warren, I'm sure, has provided additional momentum into her campaign financially. Maybe it's going to help her in Nevada. I think Joe Biden had one of his best nights. Uh, obviously, Michael Bloomberg uh, was the man behind the half billion dollars. Uh, and I was not surprised uh, that he struggled last night, but it was pretty gruesome to watch, particularly the first hour. So uh, does that mean that his candidacy is on life support? Of course not, uh, with the amount of money he's spending. But if he has another de bad debate next week in South Carolina, I don't think he can afford two of them. We have to see a different Michael Bloomberg uh, next week. So listen, over a million people have voted in California. Early votes starting in Texas. Half the votes already in in Nevada. So that benefits the people who are doing well in the race. And right now, Bernie Sanders, there was a poll in California this week, which I'm sure the actual results will not mirror that totally. He was the only one that was viable statewide. He was at 32. Everybody else is under 15. It means he would get all the statewide delegates. So at the end of the day, on the morning of March 4th, as we're still counting votes <clears throat> and delegates, if somebody has not emerged as someone who's getting into 25, 28, 29, who can be a real contender, Bernie Sanders in all likelihood is the nominee unless it gets taken from him at the convention. So that's the way I judge uh, this debate. Who is on a trajectory? And I don't think we know because I think you've got a bunch of people who are still carving up a bunch of vote. And the question is in the next two weeks, is that gonna change? But you look at everybody, David, last night that were carving each other up. Bernie, again, for the most part was unscathed. If he's the guy right now in pole position and has the momentum, has a wind at his back, is doing so well in these uh, polls in California and other states, is it, is it uh, not, uh, it's more likely than not, is it not that a couple of weeks from now, Bernie <laughs> Sanders is, you know, just may well have this thing locked down? Well, unless something fundamentally changes, and that would mean Bernie Sanders' vote share would have to drop precipitously, and I, I don't think we see any evidence of that. Or some, somebody, and I think at this point it's more likely to have to be one person than two, emerges not from like where they are, 14 or 15, but to 25, 26. He's going to exit Super Tuesday uh, with, if not an insurmountable pledge delegate lead, a significant one. So that's why the question Chuck Todd asked last night was so important. Bernie Sanders, maybe not surprisingly, um, said, hey, whoever's the pledge delegate leader uh, should be the nominee. Every other candidate refused to say that. Uh, and listen, if, if we go into the convention, Bernie Sanders has 1,400 delegates, let's say, and someone else has 1,350, I think it's fair that we're going to have a debate in, in Milwaukee. But if Bernie Sanders walks mm -hmm. into the convention with a delegate lead in the hundreds, uh, and he's got all the support from young people in particular, we're really going to have the party bosses come in and say, hey, you know what, thanks for playing. You did the best. We're going to give it to somebody else. So I think that was really revealing, because I think the rest of the field thinks Bernie Sanders is going to lead in the delegates uh, in all likelihood. So Adrian Elrod, you're there in Las Vegas, the site of the debate last night. Obviously, a lot of eyes were on Mike Bloomberg. Uh, people described him as the Wizard of Oz. He stepped out from behind the curtain and people got their first view of him, got to watch him interact and take heat from other people in a way they haven't because he's controlled the narrative through his ads, 300, 400 million dollars worth of them. Uh, he had a terrible first hour. There's no getting around that. Elizabeth Warren tore him to bits. She had a strong night. What were your big takeaways as you watched those two hours? Yeah, I was, first of all, I was very surprised by Mike Bloomberg's um, somewhat poor performance because his campaign has been making it clear that he's been working on doing a lot of debate prep over the past few weeks. Um, and, you know, this has been his big moment that we've all been waiting for. I think a lot of Democrats, however, expected Mike Bloomberg to come out as sort of like our knight in shining armor, especially since Joe Biden's numbers have gone down. They've been looking for that strong, moderate voice. Although I would certainly argue we have plenty of strong moderate voices who are still in the primary. Um, but of course, he's got the money behind his back um, to sort of, you know, save the party and save the moderate wing of the, of, the, of the Democratic Party. He didn't quite accomplish that last night. 
Um, he had a bunch of moments on that stage, of course, especially the, the exchange with Elizabeth Warren over the NDAs. Um, that really showed that he's pretty rusty on the, in terms of his debate skills and has some work to do. But I do think that he has some strong moments on policy. Of course, through his philanthropic work, he's done a number of um, things, including, of course, a big focus on climate change. You could tell when the climate change issue came to him. Um, he has a very strong command on the issues when it comes to the work that he's done in the philanthropic space. Um, but I was surprised by that. I thought Joe Biden had an incredibly strong night, especially compared to previous performances. But, you know, when we're talking about all of this, going back to what David Pluff just said, I mean, right now you've got four moderates that are splitting the moderate vote. And several of those moderates are, pol are, are polling under 15 percent, which means on Super Tuesday they may not pick up delegates. Bernie Sanders, therefore, mm. because of that, is the strong winner of last night's debate because he is still the front runner by a wide margin. Um, the four moderates, uh, nobody really emerged from that pack to, to, to stand out in terms of being able to be the moderate voice of this of this process. And, you know, like David said, a lot of the talk last night among some of my Democratic strategist friends was focused on, are we going to have a protracted convention? Is this going to go to a floor fight in July? And I think if Bernie Sanders comes out of Super Tuesday with a strong lead in the um, delegates, it's going to be really hard to catch him. Yeah, I, I, it, it certainly right now, if things keep moving the way they're moving, it doesn't look like any protect, protracted floor fight. It looks like actually a Bernie Sanders nomination. Mika, what's so interesting last night is Elizabeth Warren was attacking everybody on the stage except for Bernie Sanders. So yeah. you had the moderates attacking the moderates. And then you had the one person that could be in from Bernie Sanders' wing of the party also attacking all the moderates last night. So again, Bernie couldn't have played that out, couldn't have hoped for a better deb debate night than he had last night. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.